Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a look at the current through an inductor and how it changes when we apply a sudden voltage change to the circuit. In other words, what we have here, we have a simple circuit where we have a 10 volt voltage source, a switch that closes the T equals zero to allow current to flow through the circuit. We have some resistance in the circuit and we have a 0.1 Henry inductor. So when the switch closes, the current doesn't instantaneously go to its final value. The reason for that is because we have an inductor in the circuit that opposes a change in the current, so it takes a while for the current to build up to its final value. Here we have a graph that indicates that. So as soon as the switch is closed at t equals zero, it takes a while for a current to reach its final value. It takes a certain amount of time, and that depends on the time constant of the circuit. Here we have the equation that describes this curve right here. I as a function of time is equal to the final value of the current times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. t is time and tau is the time constant of the circuit. In an RL circuit, a circuit that has an inductor and a resistance, the time constant is equal to the inductance divided by the resistance. So in this case, we can say that the time constant is equal to the inductance is 0.1 Henry's and the resistance is 2 ohms and so this would become 0.05 seconds. 5 one hundredths of a second for a time constant. I say, well, what does a time constant really mean? Well, it turns out that typically, or typically speaking, we should say that after 5 time constants, we have reached more than 99% of its final value. So when we get to the point where I is a function of time, is greater than 99% of I final, by that time, five time constants have elapsed. So that takes about a little bit less than five time constants. So it takes five tau or five time constants. In other words, in this particular case, with this circuit and these values for the resistance and the inductor, if the time constant is 0.05 seconds, then after five time constants, so five tau, which is equal to five times 0.05 seconds, which is equal to 0.25 seconds, which is basically a quarter of a second, after one quarter of a second, the current will have reached more than 99% of its final value. So how do we find the current at any point in time? Well, we take that particular equation and we say, well, I, when let's say time is equal to one time constant, 0.05 seconds. I want to know what the current is in the circuit when we close the switch 0.05 seconds later, which is equal to one time constant. What will be the current at that point? Well, that's what we're looking for. And we'll plug that into the equation. So this is equal to the final current. Well, that means I need to calculate the final current first. Well, I final, is equal to the circuit when the inductor no longer opposes the change in the current. Once the current reaches steady state, a DC value, it doesn't change anymore, the inductor acts like a short circuit. It acts like it's not there. So imagine the circuit with the switch closed, inductor no longer there. We simply have a voltage source and a resistance. The inductor is not there because it doesn't oppose a steady state current. It only opposes a changing current. So this becomes equal to V over R. So in this case, that would be equal to 10 volts divided by two ohms resistance, which is equal to five amps. The final current is five amps. So this becomes five amps, final current, times one minus E to the minus T over tau. So what we're going to do now is replace tau by what tau is equal to. And in this case, the time constant was equal to 0.05 seconds. So I, when time is equal to 0.05 seconds, is equal to 5 amps times 1 minus E to the minus T. Oh, and what I should do is, well, I'll get there in just a moment. So T divided by 0.05 seconds, because that's what one time constant is. And, well, wait a minute, I'm technically not writing this correctly because I shouldn't write this yet. I should leave this out technically because we haven't substituted for t what that time is. So let me leave it like this. I'm going to write as, as this instead. And then finally, now when I plug in a value for t, that would be better. I, 
when t is equal to 0.05 seconds, what I do now is I replace t by what t is equal to. So we get the final current times 1 minus e to the minus t, which is now 0.05 seconds. And we divide that by 0.05 seconds because that's one tau, which is called one time constant. So in essence, what we get is that this is equal to 5 amps times 1 minus e to the minus 1 power. So let's go ahead and work that out. So we have uh, minus 1, raise that to e to the x, subtract that from plus 1, and we get this is equal to 5 amps times 0.632. In other words, after one time constant in an RL circuit, a circuit that has a resistance and an inductor, you will reach 63.2% of your final value after one time constant has elapsed. So this is equal to, if you then multiply it times 5, then you get 3.16 amps, which means that the current through the circuit after five one hundredths of a second have elapsed, which is equal to one time constant, you will have reached 63.2% of its final value, the current, which is 3.16 amps. What would it be after, let's say, five time constants? All right, then what we do here is we say, I, when time is equal to 0 0.25 seconds, which we now know is five time constants, this is equal to the final current, five amps, times, 1 minus e to the minus 0 0.25 seconds divided by a single time constant. And you can see that this is equal to 0 0.25 seconds is equal to 5 amps times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus. That would be minus 5. All right? When you plug that into a calculator, you get the following. To the x, you get i when time is equal to 0 0.25 seconds, which happens to be five time constants, you get five amps times, and here we get 0 0.993. So in other words, after five time constants, you will have reached 99.3% of your final current in the circuit. And if you all know what that value is, times five equals, and you get 4.97 amps, rounded off to two decimal places. So that's how we calculate the current in an RL circuit when we have a DC current applied. Remember, initially when the current comes up, the inductor fights a change in the current, it holds back the, the current flow, but eventually the current does reach its final value after about five time constants, which in this case is about a quarter of a second. And that's how it's done.